Welcome to Advent 2017 series of the Black Madonna Speaks on the Heart of the Black Madonna channel with me, your host, Stephanie Georgieff. We are living through deeply transformative times. Something new is about to be born. And for those of you who have had the privilege of giving physical birth or have supported a woman giving birth, you know that the process of labor is dramatic and sometimes painful, but always brings forth something new and precious. At the moment of birth, everything changes. The old is forever past and the new is full of possibilities. Advent is a very pregnant time. In the Northern Hemisphere, it is a time of lengthening night and increasing darkness. In ancient times, the long nights leading into winter were always a time of unknowing. Surviving to spring was not a given. If people could live through the winter cold with lack of food, it really was anyone's guess if they would see the spring. And on our beautiful planet right now, we are facing great challenges. Is it, it is as if we are entering into a deep winter. The old is dying out. We are in the throes of a very difficult labor. So I thought it would be helpful to come together, to journey together from darkness, divine darkness into light just as the baby begins its journey from the worn and loving darkness of its mother's womb into the light of a new life. So I want to thank you for joining me on this Advent journey. I'm going to share some material that I've, I had the honor of presenting during a book tour in the autumn and Advent of 2016 when I spoke to the Christian communities and anthroposophical societies in California, Pennsylvania, New York, and Michigan. Some of the material you can further explore through my book, The Black Madonna, Mysterious Soul Companion, which is available in print, on Kindle, and through Audible. And some of the material you will hear through this series is from research for upcoming books in the Black Madonna Speaks series. In this segment, we will be delving into divine darkness and the Black Madonna as an Advent reflection. So divine darkness and the Black Madonna, treasures of darkness for Advent. Before I start, I want to make clear that these reflections are very, are my interpretation on the theme. My hope is that my reflections spark your own journey of discovery and interpretation. I am in no way the final word on Black, the Black Madonna, nor the definitive perspective on Advent. And I, just as the universe evolves and transforms, so does my and our understanding of what the Black Madonna represents. Now, if you look in your Bible concordance under the word darkness, there are many, many verses. And many of those verses regarding darkness aren't exactly what I would call positive. But what I have done is selected several verses which I think embody the entire theme of divine darkness and Advent. Now, the first verse really starts in the beginning of the Bible. It comes from Genesis 1, verse 2 and 3. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The next verse we often hear in Advent 
services and liturgy. And it comes from the book of Isaiah that was prophesying the coming of the Messiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, a light that has dawned on those living in the land of darkness. And this is found in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 3. Now the next verse comes from the book Song of Solomon, which is also known as the Song of Songs. And this verse is, I have chosen because it is often put on icons with Black Madonnas. And the Song of Songs, or the Song of Solomon, is also a beautiful canticle to the intimacy between divinity and humanity. So this verse reads, I am black but beautiful, O daughters of Jerusalem, black as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Our next verse comes to us out of the prologue of the Gospel of John. And it talks about the incarnation of the Logos. So it has a lot to do with Advent. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. John 1, verse 5. And then the last verse I have, which I find to be the most delicious when it comes to prophesying the coming of the Messiah or Advent, comes from Isaiah 45, verse 3. And it reads, I will give you treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. And the reason why I say this is delicious is because it really encapsulates how I view divine darkness, that there's treasures and there's hidden riches. And I always feel that first when I look up into the night sky and see sun, stars. Now, throughout my personal journey with the Black Madonna, I am constantly asked how I began this study of the Black Madonna. What started it? What started my relationship to the Black Madonna? I'm not a collector, a fan of anything in particular, except knowledge. I thirst for and strive for knowledge. It is my guiding principle. For me, this question of how I got started with the Black Madonna actually harkens back to the beginning of my known memory as a child entering into the study of science. When I was being introduced to the concepts of matter, of atoms, chemicals, and different states of matter, from solid to liquid to gas, bond angles, and different distances between atoms, the one thing that seemed to interest me most, and for which no one would actually talk about was, was what is in the spaces? What is in between the atoms? What holds everything together? Why were we people not blobs of atoms floating about like jellyfish? And why wasn't the known universe simply being flung about into oblivion instead of rotating in an orderly manner? The simple answers that my teachers and the books were giving me of gravitational forces just did not seem to cut it. Math holds us together, equations, there had to be more to it. What was really creating this order, this cohesion I was experiencing in my daily life? What was holding everything together through the mundane aspects of being to the universe I was witnessing in the night sky? Throughout my life, the quest that these questions sparked to find out what is in the spaces has led me to the most sublime of discoveries, a never ending story, if you like, that actually begins in darkness, divine generative darkness. So I want to just look at this picture of the Black Madonna, if you're not familiar with this genre and just notice 
what you see in this very, very striking image. This is the Black Virgin of Memats, France. She is also called the Egyptian. And we're going to go forward and concentrate on questions from the heart. As questions are the medium of the soul and knowledge, we will have several questions we will weave together, not only for this segment, but actually for Advent and into the rest of the year and eternity, if you want to get specific. For this segment, the following questions are paramount to the beginning of our journey from darkness into light. Questions to ponder for our Advent sojourn. To begin this small aspect of this individual and collective journey, let us start asking some questions of our own. What is art? What is the Black Madonna? What is divine darkness? How does the Black Madonna and divine darkness relate to Advent? What is the journey from darkness into light? So our first question, what is art? Russian painter Vasily Kadinsky states in an essay entitled The Problem of Form, thus behind matter, within matter, the creative spirit is concealed. Austrian philosopher and founder of the anthroposophical movement, Rudolf Steiner, states in a lecture cycle entitled The Influence of Spiritual Beings on Man, that art is the creation of organs through which the gods are able to speak to humanity. German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer defines art as a type of knowledge that leads more directly to the divine than is possible for intellectual knowledge. We also know that art is a method for healing and that the visual arts of painting work on the feeling realm. Sculpture works on the will. The activity of color between light and darkness is the language of the soul. We are moved inwardly. We experience emotion. Colors speak a language more universal and archetypal than any spoken word. The transformation of a set mass, such as with clay or through carving wood, has an inner reflection on our metabolic processes. Such artistic activity outwardly manifests in our ability to impact the world through our will, to be able to bring form to our thoughts, to our physical bodies, to our relationships, and to our work. So taking Steiner and the others at their word, what exactly are the gods trying to say to us through the image of the genre of the Black Madonna? What is the Black Madonna? The Madonna as an artistic genre is symbolic of the human soul. What is known objectively about the phenomena of the Black Madonnas is that they are statues, paintings, mosaics, and stained glass windows in which the Virgin Mary is purposefully colored black or very dark brown. In Europe, during the Middle Ages, the bulk of these work of art appeared in areas where the only external racial expression was Caucasian at the time. The images rarely have an artist associated with them and are often attributed to the handiwork of St. Luke the Evangelist. With no documented artist associated with these images' origins, the exact dates of creation are unknown. Many of the stories of their genesis are associated with their discoveries. Scholars do agree that the majority of work of art date from the 5th and 6th centuries up to the 14th century. Most of the images have legends and history associated with them that date between the 11th and the 13th centuries. The Black Madonnas were first brought to Europe through St. Helen of the Cross and later were brought 
to the continent by Coptic monks of North Africa. Finally, a large contingency was sent through the hands and parcels of the Crusaders and the Knights Templar during the High Middle Ages. Something to keep in mind when we, is that when the age of the Black Madonnas was in full force during the Crusades, this age, we are told by Rudolf Steiner, was the age of the preparation for the epoch of the age of the consciousness soul, or our current era. The Black Madonnas are scattered throughout Europe with a great number in France. Another common theme is that many Black Madonnas are found in churches along the European pilgrim route, the Camino de Santiago de Compostela. A common narrative of the Black Madonnas is that they endure everything imaginable, from bombs to fires, floods, wars, physical brokenness, to being cast off at sea. These Madonnas simply endure everything and endure against all odds. Many theories abound as to why the Black Madonnas are black. One theory indicates that these dark images are blackened through age and candle smoke. Another theory states that the images are remnants of goddess worship of the conquered local populations. So what was the reason there are so many Black Madonnas placed in historically Caucasian geography during the early centuries of Christianity up to the Crusades. One of the more serious materialistic studies of the Black Madonna was given at a meeting at the American Association for the Advancement of Science on December 28, 1952. The author of the study, Leonard Moss, reviewed a hundred of these works of art found in Europe and divided them into three categories. The first category was the Madonnas were dark brown or black with a physiognomy and skin pigmentation matching that of the indigenous population. The second category stated that various art forms had turned black as a result of certain physical factors, such as the deterioration of lead-based pigments, accumulated smoke from candles, and the grime of ages. But the third category was considered a residual category, and there was no ready explanation as to why these Madonnas were so dark. What is most interesting is that the bulk of the Black Madonnas are in the last residual category. So what do the Black Madonnas uh, have in common? What are the similarities between the Black Madonnas of the world? One thing, obviously, is their color. They're dark. They're dark brown or black. And they're very much in contrast to white Madonnas of the same era. The Black Madonnas, as I said before, the bulk of them were carried uh, from the Holy Land by the Crusaders and the Knights Templar. And they were placed along the Camino de Santiago de Compostela and in many Templar cathedrals and shrines throughout Europe. Another interesting trend, again, is their placement. They're along the Camino, but we also see them placed next to springs, wells, lakes, on shores, uh, and their narratives are mainly of discovery. They tend to be discovered in caves, uh, buried underground, they wash up on the shore. Very interesting, very common themes between them. And as we said before, if there is an artist associated with them, it's Saint Luke the Evangelist. 
and this we will find in later segments, is very significant because St. Luke not only was an artist, but he was also considered a physician, a healer, and the Luke Gospel has the most recorded healings in the Gospel than any other of the Gospels. And finally, something that I personally find very interesting is that the Black Madonnas have extraordinarily large hands. So what is divine darkness? In order to understand what divine darkness is, we really need to look at what the significance of the color black is. The most defining quality of the Black Madonnas is their color. Ranging from dark brown to black, there is no mistaking the fact that these images are dark. Such pigmentation is not representative of the populations where these works of art first appeared on the European continent. We also have many images of the Madonna and child occurring during this same time period, which are much lighter and definitely Caucasian. Much of the exoteric and exoteric information regarding the nature of black can give some indication as to why this residual category of black Madonnas are black. These understandings will allow us to comprehend there is a rich, soul-fulfilling nature to black. Black has an earthly groundedness that brings balance to the universe. In Gothic and medieval art, all expressions needed opposites to be considered complete. It was felt that no symbolism could be present unless a paradox existed. We will discover that all creativity, living thinking, even the expression of color itself is dependent on the tandem existence of opposites, entwined in paradox, darkness within, and next to light. As stated in the introduction, there are numerous references in scripture relating darkness as a symbol of God's wisdom and generativity. In the Song of Songs, the bride proclaims she is black but beautiful. In numerous Russian, Byzantine, and Greek icons, this verse is over the Madonna's head. In Isaiah 45, verse 3, the prophecy of the coming of the Messiah through Mary is foretold with the generative theme of darkness. God promises, I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches in secret places. Blackness can also be seen as the badge of coming through fire, to be burnt with experience. One becomes refined, but still alive. The refinement is also symbolic of the transformational nature of earthly life within physical bodies. It is interesting to me that many of the Black Madonnas uh, survive fires. They are burnt, but they endure. In materialistic science, black is not considered to be a color. According to physics, black is the result of absorption of all colors. If we understand light in the exoteric sense, the way the eye perceives light is through a combination of waves and particles. Black and white are at polar opposites of the spectrum. Black absorbs all colors while white reflects all colors. Everything in between is perceived as a transition from one to the other. Color cannot exist without the transformation of one pole of darkness to the other pole of light. We need black, we need darkness in order to perceive light. Darkness and light. When materialistic science was formulated during the Renaissance and beyond, matter was defined as being composed of separate and individual entities. The concepts of atom, particles, and wavelengths were applied to all phenomena, from gravity to energy and mass and weight. It's interesting to note that all of Newton's theorems regarding mass, weight, and energy were consistent until it came 
to comprehending the phenomena of light and color. Was light a particle or was it a wave? Initial experiments proved light was both and it threw the world of exoteric science into chaos. Light and color did not behave according to the laws of matter and physics within the materialistic paradigm of Newton. New theories had to be postulated and tested. It is interesting to note that Goethe was formulating his theories of phenomenological science and color during the time when orthodox science was struggling to define light. It was not until the 20th century under Einstein Heisenberg and others that theories and experiments began to understand that light operates in communities and spontaneously. Quanta or packets of light energy were discovered by the nature of light. The famous equation E equals mc squared was introduced to describe the relationship of matter to light and energy. Energy, the equation states, is equal to mass times the speed of light squared. In equations, one can alter the order, but the components are always equal. If the constants are rearranged, we see that matter is frozen light, or matter can be considered energy on the way to becoming light. Our continuing space exploration ports returning to us from the Hubble telescopes have also shattered our materialistic concepts of the universe. While much science has focused on the nature of life living within the ecology of our universe of polarities, a new conceptualization of dark began to emerge. All matter is frozen light. the cosmic nature of black. Star, Steiner taught that for everything there is a balancing effect. We see this within his Christology through the understanding of the balancing effects between Christ, Lucifer, and Ahriman. Steiner also spoke of the balancing force of gravity as being levity. It is astounding to note that only until recently has materialistic science started to appreciate the existence of dark matter. Nigel Smith and Neil Spooner articulate this concept in a paper entitled The Search for Dark Matter. It was presented in a 2000 issue of Physics World. Smith and Spooner reported that astronomers were surprised and disturbed to learn in the 1930s that our Milky Way galaxy behaved as if it contained more matter than could be seen with telescopes. This puzzling non-luminous matter became known as dark matter. What physicists and cosmologists now are concluding is that most of the universe is actually made up of dark matter, over 95% in fact. Astronomer Vera Rubin in the year 1951 noticed that while galaxies rotate, the outer edges of the galaxies traveled as fast in the center as they did in the exterior. What was of particular interest is that galaxies did not fall apart during this motion. The glue holding all of the inhabitants of these galaxies together was termed dark matter. We will be talking later in this series about the cos concept of the cosmic Sophia, the first created being of divinity that allowed the matrix and container for the locus to manifest. But for now, let us keep this in mind, that dark matter is the matrix that holds physical creation together. It is an unseen majority force, as well as a matter that permeates all of creation, allowing for cohesion and order. Dark matter keeps the universe from spinning out of control into oblivion. In a way, dark matter hugs the universe. 
the spiritual understanding of black. Seiner revisited ancient angelic knowledge when he explained the evolution of the earth. He states that the third hierarchy of angels comprised of archai, archangels, and angels are the mediators between light and darkness. This activity brought about the admixture through which colors could arise. Within classical Greek cosmology, which influenced alchemy, black is the color of condensation, representing the earth. As earth is implicit in all life processes, it is constant. It is all representations of color. Black is present in one degree or another. Steiner invites us to think of light as ensouled, to realize the habit of seeing light as merely vibrations emanating from the sun. The sun, as described by Steiner in Man Hieroglyph of the Universe, has a sucking action that annihilates, and in that process generates light, not warmth. Its opposite, darkness, he teaches, is filled with warmth. Steiner teaches that black is in the group of the image colors. White is considered the soul's image of spirit, and black is the spirit's image of death. It is interesting to know that the beginning of the cosmos and an individual human being have their genesis in darkness. Light and darkness permeate our existence. Both are necessary for our well-being. Steiner gives us the idea that darkness is warmth, goodness, will, and love, and the interaction between the polarity of heavenly light and earth, darkness, plays a very important role. We could not perceive life without darkness. Darkness depends on light for revelation. In tandem with light, darkness births colors. Materialistic science is now coming to terms with the fact that darkness is a force rather than a void. In the therapeutic text, Light, Darkness, and Color in Painting Therapy, therapist Leanne Collier de Aubois presents an incredible picture of darkness that is used in artistic therapy. She states, dark and lightness are primordial creators. They form the great cosmic polarity from which the beginning of time all creation originated. She then goes on to articulate how darkness is the first great generative color experience of cosmic symphony. Darkness, according to her understanding, is the carrier of warmth, love, and gravity. Within darkness, blackness, all qualities of goodness, loving sustenance are contained. If we picture the beginning of creation, from all darkness there is the beginning of loving birth of the cosmos. Light involves cosmic thought. Color involves cosmic feeling, and darkness reflects cosmic willing, willing. Lois Schroff, through her work as an art therapist, notes that seeds for the future are laid in darkness. This orientation is based on Rudolf Steiner's insights regarding the three aspects of the human soul, thinking, feeling, and willing and how they relate to our existence as humans, as well as our connection to the cosmos. Human will, actions performed by our limbs, our initiatives and doings, all lay foundations towards the future. Due to darkness and its relationship with the will, the beginnings of something new can arise, the impulse for movement. I find it fascinating that the Black Madonnas are not only Black, but they have very large hands. 
for me, it is that the Black Madonnas were and still are actually truly speaking to the future, speaking to humanity so long ago about what was to come and our need to ready for the onslaught in some aspects, to use our wills to forge an unconscious, to forge a conscious moral meeting with what is to come. Ultimately, darkness can be seen as the spark for new creation. It is interesting to note that the cooperative act of physical creation between the sexes and divinity, that of procreation, occurs in the dark recesses of the female's womb. Procreation is the ultimate act of will, sowing seeds for the future. Dionysius the Arepagate was one of the Apostle Paul's first initiates. We read in Acts 17 of one of Paul's missionary sermons being given in Athens. Paul was brought before the Areopagus after debating Stoics and the Epicureans to present his thesis. The Areopagus meant a big piece of rock and was the setting for trials and debates witnessed by a council of elders. Paul's sermon presented in Acts 17 was mainly concerning how humanity is an offspring of God, that God is not limited to inhabiting an idol. Paul also witnessed the story of the resurrected Christ at his own conversion, which was in the presence of the resurrected Christ on the way to the Damascus. Paul was so convincing by his testimony that Dionysius was converted. We can read about this in Acts 17. What is interesting about Dionysius the Eurypagite was that he went on as one of the very first converts to Christianity to be one of the major fathers of Christian theology. He wrote a book, Mystical Theology. Our ideas of angels come from him through his writings on the celestial hierarchy, but he also wrote a book on divine darkness. His thoughts on divine darkness were that one could most acutely feel spirit in darkness because you wouldn't be distracted by the light or objects. This concept of divine darkness can be seen at the Cathedral of Chartres. This picture is part of the crypt where pilgrims would come and sing and chant and pray all night long in darkness and to ascend to the main sanctuary in the glittering light and color of all those magnificent windows. Another way of looking at the spiritual context of darkness is as through the dark night of the soul. St. John of the Cross developed this content, context uh, called the dark night of the soul when he was imprisoned by his fellow brothers for trying to reform the order. He felt completely abandoned and abused by his fellow human beings. But through the dark night, he felt the powerful, unhindered presence of divinity that allowed for his transformation. Divine darkness gives the opportunity to sense divinity without distraction or illusion. So how do the Black Madonnas and divine darkness relate to Advent? In anthroposophical Christology, the season of Advent could not be more diametrically opposed to the outward hysterical frenzy associated with the exoteric church and materialistic shopping and feeding orgy leading up to the 25th of December. 
Sergei Prokofiev, in his book, The Cycle of Year as Path of Initiation to an Experience of the Christ Being, gives an overview of Advent. In essence, Advent is a time when the spiritual world slowly withdraws from humanity so we can experience deep solitude and complete independence from the spiritual world. And through the experience of using our own efforts, our own will to find the Christ, we are to strengthen our own moral forces. We are to use our memory of our connection with divinity to form our self-conscious ego. The beautiful Advent garden we create for our children hearkens to this memory. We are to enkindle during these long, dark nights of our cosmic origins on the earth. The Black Madonnas, through their many symbolic gestures, their colors, their placement, and their timing, also ask us to use our wills on this path of initiation, to find our way during our age when the spiritual world has in essence given us all the necessary tools along the way to prepare us for conscious union with divinity, conscious union with the great world ego of the mystic lamb, the Christ as told in Revelation. Divine darkness is a place where we can most intensely feel and comprehend the divine, but it is also the state of the divine preparation for the differentiation and staging ground for the incarnation. We are in the long cosmic process of incarnating into full consciousness. The main things relating Advent to divine darkness and the Black Madonna is that these motifs speak to us about our cosmic origins and our task during the age of consciousness soul in relation to our journey of the human spiritual evolution. In darkness and solitude, we are to use our wills to manifest cosmic will on earth through our deeds. These motifs of divine darkness and the Black Madonna also speak the, to the difficulties of our age, the difficulty of evolving with evil in the age of consciousness soul, the trials we must and can endure, and the endurance that we are capable of as inheritors of divinity during this time in our individual and collective history. So here are some thoughts to take us into our dream. What is Advent? What is incarnation? How do we participate in the incarnation? And how do we experience darkness? Blessings on your journey. The images for this slideshow were taken from Wikimedia Commons, the University of Dayton International Marian Research Institute Black Madonna page, and Interfaith Mary Black Madonna Index webpage. Please visit these pages and donate to them so they can continue 